The pre-patch for Cataclysm can be quite a confusing one. Are we technically in the pre-patch now because we have Operation Nomragon and Zalazane's Fall? Will we get the pre-patch in a single drop or will it be two like it was originally? What happened with those two pre-patch events and what gear can you get from them? There is actually loads to go through, so let's not stand on ceremony and get straight into the information. So the first question is, are we technically in the pre-patch now? Well, not exactly. The event going on currently, though, is a good sign that we aren't far off, because historically, when Operation Nomragon started, there was only another five weeks until patch 4.0.1 officially hit the servers, which was the start of the pre-patch. I personally would love to see a nice long pre-patch because it's not something that will likely happen again. And no matter how many private servers you've played on in your lifetime, I've never seen one that has a pre-patch event running. Not to mention how unbalanced the classes are going to be, how fun smashing ICC will be, with all our new talents and abilities we're going to get from talents, and even battlegrounds I suspect are going to be pretty insane. The pre-patch could be a bit of a frustrating one for certain specs though, much like Wrath of the Lich King's pre-patch was for the Feral Druid, because they were balanced around an ability they wouldn't have access to that ability being Savage Raw. Well, this time it'll be the Rep Paladin's turn because you won't have Inquisition, which gives 30% holy damage. And in a 4.3.4 state, of course, you're balanced and tuned around keeping this damage buff up at all times. Even without that though, it's going to be a great time for everyone, including Rep Paladins. Before we start looking at exactly what comes with the first part of the pre-patch though, be sure to pick up your Rested XP guide if you haven't already. Pre-orders are available now using the link in the pinned comment or the description below. It is an affiliate link, so every guide bought actually goes towards supporting the channel, so thanks for that in advance. And I can honestly say it is the fastest way to level, having both leveled on the beta with it and without it. Now, I do think there's going to be a minor few things that are changed this time around, which will be different from the original pre-patching Cataclysm. And once you have a full understanding of everything to expect in both parts of the pre-patch, we'll touch on those little changes that I expect to see and you'll probably expect to see as well. Now, the best way to look at what's going on at the moment with Zalazane's Fall and Operation Nomragon is this is actually a pre-event for the pre-patch. So this isn't going to last forever in fact it really should only run up until the pre-patch but blizzard did say it's going to run until the end of the pre-patch which may or may not be the case we'll have to wait and see they did say it's going to be until the end so that gives you a little bit more time to get it complete if you haven't already but if you care about filling out your toy box or even getting feats of strength then make sure you at least get the main quest line done of this so you can get that feat of strength and the toy that comes with it so there's the first part of the pre-patch then there's an event and then there's the second part of the pre-patch the first part of the pre-patch should bring things like your new talents, reforging, the new raid system, the new currency changes. It's basically classed as the systems patch. So this will be so you can get used to your class playing a little bit differently now. It's also where things like ammo will be removed. Spells and abilities no longer having multiple ranks and now they instead scale with character level. Hunters will now be using a focus system. Druid will now have their eclipse system. Warlocks will now have their new soul shard system. It's basically the core systems of Cataclysm that are added. Now some key things to note when it comes to this part of the pre-patch is there'll be no mastery on gear but you will be able to reforge mastery onto your gear at this point there should still be no goblins or wargons and as i previously mentioned the lockout system should change with ice crown citadel and ruby sanctum all the raids before that will act exactly as they did before but now you'll only be able to do icc 25 heroic or icc 10 heroic each week and the loot shouldn't change so you'll still get 25 man loot from 25 and 10 from 10 whereas in kata obviously you'll start to get the same loot across both difficulties well not difficulties raid sizes and if you're not aware the way the raid system works is if you're doing normal bosses so you're let's say halfway through an icc 25 normal and your group falls apart you can then finish the rest of the raid on 10 man. However, as soon as you kill a heroic boss, either in 10 or 25, you are now locked to that raid size for the rest of the week. So you'll have to continue with that ID. And it is going to be at this point where all your emblems of frost and triumph will get converted to the new justice point system. And anything below that should get converted to gold. You haven't got to worry too much if you haven't got enough to actually reach the justice point cap now, because any dungeon or raid which awards emblems of frost or emblems of triumph currently 
they will now award justice points instead. If you're wondering if there's a way you can get a leg up to be able to get some valor points before Cataclysm launches, unfortunately you won't. So it's not like ICC 25 Heroic will give valor points because it won't. You're going to go into Cataclysm with zero. And valor points, if you don't know, is where you're going to start getting your current tier epics and tier sets. The same will apply for PvP currency changes as well. All arena points, honor points, battleground marks of honor, stonekeeper shards, venture coins, spirit shards, all of those will get converted into the new honor point system. At this point as well, we should get the new glyph system as well, where you've actually got prime, major and minor glyphs and you use dust of disappearance to change a glyph on the fly. Once you've learned a glyph, you will have it forever. It just sits in your glyph pane. And then whenever you want to change it, just a dust of disappearance, which you buy from a vendor and you can swap them whenever you want. There are some other minor changes that come in the pre-patch, but they're things that are just not worth talking about and you'll see them when they go live. Now, you may be wondering at this point whether it's a good time to start leveling an ult and unfortunately not really because you're really waiting for the shattering because at this point you've got all your new abilities, but the world is exactly the same as it's been all the way through Wrath of the Lich King. So the new class and race combos where for example you could be a tauren paladin these don't actually come into effect until the shattering happens because if we go all the way back to when it launched the reason for this was that in the wake of a world on the brink of destruction members of the horde and alliance have taken to new cultures and studies mastering crafts previously foreign to them so this meant that many existing playable races now have new class combinations it's at this point where you'll expect goblin and worgen to also be playable now originally goblin and worgen weren't actually available in the pre-patch but neither was death knights during wrath of the lich king and if we actually look at the classic roadmap you can see that they did already state that worgen and goblin will be available in the pre-patch so you can expect it in the second part of the pre-patch and before we go over exactly what comes in the second part there's actually a really good event that happens in between. And this is exactly the reason why I think they will follow the old style of patching, where we've got part one pre-patch, then we've got an event, then we've got a part two pre-patch. Because the invasion event that's going to happen actually took place in the old world, or the world as we know it currently. So it would probably take a lot more effort for them to completely redesign the event to work with the shattered world. So you've got all your shiny new talents, your new abilities, we've got the raid lockout system and currency changes, now there's going to be a big invasion event with lots of quests. So the way the event actually worked was it happens between the first part of the pre-patch and the second part of the pre-patch, and it leads up over four phases all the way until the shattering happens, bringing all the final changes before we actually head into Cataclysm itself. To begin with, you're going to be doing quests around your capital city, be it Stormwind or Ogrimmar, obviously depending on what faction you are, and it's all around the Twilight Cult's plans to unleash elementals. Spoiler alert, preventing it must fail because uh, we do get the elemental invasions. But there's a few quests that you're going to be doing and the invasion starts right at the beginning. So as soon as this event starts, the invasions will happen. Now there's going to be four types of elemental rifts. There's going to be air, earth, fire and water. And depending on what zone it is will depend on what kind of rifts actually spawn there. Now this is not just in Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor, this also takes place in Northrend and Outland as well. You can see roughly on these maps what sort of zones you can expect to find what sort of elementals. Or if you want to pause the video and take a quick screenshot of this, you'll be able to see in exactly what zone the level of the mobs are and what type of elementals they are as well. So the rift itself will start with a certain amount of health and for every elemental that's killed it will reduce the health of the rift until it's closed. When you close one of these rifts, you're also going to get a daily quest that you can deliver a mysterious object. This just hands in at the Irvin Ring Agents back in your main capital city. You'll also get a one hour buff depending on what you actually closed. If you closed an earth rift, you'll get earth powered where your melee attack, ranged attack and harmful spell or healing has a chance to heal you. You can get fire powered where each attack has a chance of engulfing the target in flames. Water powered where it has a chance to increase your energy, rage, mana or runic power gain. Or wind powered which has a chance to increase your haste. Now, I'm really hoping these work in ICC because actually just for the pre-patch being able to get a world buff of sorts would actually be pretty cool because I have a feeling some of these are going to be pretty broken. A couple of other quests are then added the following week, but nothing game breaking and there's no additions outside of the invasions. The third week or phase is not going to add too much either, just another few quests that you can go around and complete. But then the final phase, which will last a week and it will go all the way up until the shattering happens. Every few hours, there'll be elemental invasions happening to your main capital cities. Now, these are level 80 and if you're lower than level 80, when 
one of these is happening there'll actually be portals that can teleport you out to safety just so it's a little bit less frustrating and if you are level 80 you'll be given sandbags and barricades that you'll just be placing around at certain spots within the city to help protect the innocent at the top of your screen it will show you how many unsecured districts there are and what district of the city currently has a rift in to go and destroy and it really does work pretty much exactly the same as it does in the open world the only difference is because it's in a capital city it's expected that there's going to be more people around so the rifts are just slightly stronger you'll also be able to get an earthen ring unbinding totem now occasionally when battling the elementals in the city you can be imprisoned in an elemental trap and you'll need someone near you to use one of these totems to actually break you out of it so if you're fighting any of these in the cities make sure you've got your earthen ring unbinding totem in your bag now the same applies when it comes to the world buff so each time a city is under attack it will only be attacked by two specific types of elementals at one go so depending on what rifts you close depends on what buff you're going to gain between the earth powered fire powered water powered or wind powered buffs also there's a feat of strength to destroy at least one of each elemental rift during the cataclysm launch event so if you're one that wants all these achievements, make sure you don't miss out on this. Now there is one little bonus to defending your city. So if you successfully defend the city, it'll actually open a portal from the city you just defended to a hideout of an elemental lord. Now of course, like any seasonal event, you'll be able to use Dungeon Finder just to queue specifically into these, the same way you would for something like Brewfest. But all of these bosses drop 251 gear, so the equivalent of ICC 10 gear. Now you'll be familiar with these bosses, no doubt. We've got Gazrilla as one, we've got Crown Princess Faradras as another, Grand Ambassador Flamelash, and finally Prince Sarsaran. Now, I would assume that these also will give justice points, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But like you can see, they drop quite a few decent pieces of 251 gear. I won't go through all of them, but this just gives you a good idea as if you as a tank or a healer or a physical DPS or a spell DPS, you can actually get a few decent bits during this, especially if you're re-rolling for Kata or, you know, you've got ults that need gear. Just going in and getting like three 251 pieces is going to be awesome so like you can see with the complexity of this event it would make sense that it's going to happen in the world as it exists today so this does mean as soon as you've closed all these rifts you've defended your cities you've been killing these extra bosses using random dungeon finder to get into them then deathwing blows the world up not only does he blow the world up you may remember back in the day dying to deathwing when you're running around leveling because yes occasionally a zone will go red and he will flood it with fire now, a lot of people think this is a pre-patch only thing, but actually, this continues on all the way until Dragon Soul launches. The good thing is, if you die, you do actually get an achievement, but you can also get this achievement in Dragon Soul later on down the line. Now, really, it's at this point where everything else gets added that you would expect. So the new race and class combinations will be open, all the questing zones will change completely, the experience needed for level 70 to 80 is reduced, but we do know Blizzard are actually adjusting 60 to 80, so I'd imagine it's going to be at this point where that change happens as well. Dead Mines will now change, as will Shadowfang Keep. Archaeology will also be added, but the one minor thing that could be frustrating is actually you shouldn't be able to get the Azeroth flying license until Cataclysm actually launches. So while you will be able to do archaeology, you will be doing it all on foot. So when I was talking about minor things I expect to be changed, one of those would be being able to fly. I have a feeling this time round, during this section of the pre-patch when the world changes you'll probably be able to fly or learn how to fly from level 60 in the old zones and the other minor change which we've already covered would be worgans and goblins being accessible at this point as well but for me this is the point where you would be leveling your alts or just messing around in the old world checking out all the new quests because really once you've done your archaeology there's not actually that much that's added it is now just everything's changed ready for launch and this part of the pre-patch would only last about two weeks absolute maximum so just a couple of weeks having fun leveling characters in the old zones but with new quests sounds like a pretty good time anyway whilst we're in this point of the pre-patch there should be no world events at all the invasions would have stopped completely and the only thing that's going on is we're all just checking our watch just waiting for 80 to 85 to unlock and i would say that's pretty much everything that you can expect to be coming in the pre-patch and how i foresee it going i do see us getting a part one pre-patch then the world events and then part two pre-patch and then we'll go into launch obviously we'll have to wait and see could be wrong been wrong before i'll be wrong again but if you enjoyed the video be sure to like subscribe check out rested xp in the pinned comment and description and i'll see you on the next one